Ah, salut everyone and welcome, welcome to a new episode or a new kind of series I'm starting, which is called, um, Nations that no one ever play as, no one ever play as is, and for right reason. Um, so basically in this Let's Play, I've decided, you know what, well, a little bit of backstory, yeah. basically when I was doing a vote back for my Indian Let's Play and before India was decided, I had said in that video that, you know, you know, you, you can choose any nation you want to be, even the Santo Caliphate, and uh, I always, all I said about that was that don't expect me to live long. Well, after a little bit of thinking and after India had won, I was like, you know, that would actually be a very interesting let's play to see how long I could last as the Santo Caliphate. So, you know, I decided to uh, come back to here, come back to the beginning of Victoria 2, and Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the Santo Galavid in one gigantic let's play. Now, this will not be one of the, this is not going to be a typical let's play because I'm not going to make you guys sit through everything. In fact, I'll probably, what I'm probably going to do is cut every like 10 years and you guys get to see if I'm still alive or not. And probably most likely there won't be any changes or anything like that. But another change I'm also going to do to make this let's play kind of interesting is that what I will be doing is that I will not be westernizing. What? Yes, I will not be westernizing this entire campaign. Um, that does not mean that I won't be allowed to like get some of the westernizing tech, but I will never press the button to westernize because I feel like that would kind of defeat the purpose of being the Santo Caliphate, where we will not give in to the western ideals or those stupid little teacups and wigs and um, railroads and advanced healthcare. We won't give in to it. We will stay our own independent nation by the ways of the old gods and the ways of how our forefathers have taught us. And that is the way I think I will be playing this, so um, <laughs> wish me luck. I'm I'm definitely in a very curious mood to see how long they last. I mean, uh, yeah. So placing bets, everyone. Whoever is close, place your own bets in the comments to see how long I'll survive before this video begins. I may put like a little like... Um, flashy backy thing so that you can easily place your bets because I want to see if anyone gets anywhere close to see how long I survive and yeah all right with for, without further ado everyone we have started the Santo Caliphate let's play and first time skip is starting now okay so I would bring so like I said I bring you guys back either when something important happens or when it has been 10 years and there's not been anything important happened. I need to do a cutscene. Otherwise, it becomes too big of you guys to join in and really care about the Let's Play. So, um, something actually did happen. Um, um, while I was here, I've been just raising my legacy rate and I've also disbanded my army. Because, why do I need an army? I mean, no one's gonna, no one's gonna attack me anytime soon. If they do attack me, I probably will not stand any of a chance against any great power. So, you know, I just disbanded them. But, anyways... Um, we have an event here, and in fact, it's the only event that we can actually do, so, you know what, I'm gonna read this out, and usually I don't like to read events out because, you know, they kind of get boring, and they usually do it in a very boring manner, but this is the only event we have, and you know what, we have to read it out. So, here we go. The Annuals of the Funali Jihad. Oh, shoot, I'm never gonna be able to say that, but the Emir of Gondu wrote, well, he was still alive, a book on the Fujai Jihad, the baptism of fire by which Santo was formed. By spreading word of this magnificent work of, the, of his history, we can bring glory and renown to our nation. So, um, basically that event was fired off after you get, you know, Santo Caliphate literacy up be above 4.0%. And it's also fired out, and it basically just gives you some prestige, so now we have two prestige in our great nation's power and yeah basically nothing else really changed we're just kind of still that little nation that's really doing nothing so um yeah i'll cut to another chase right about now okay everyone we have an important event in the uh, 1840 uh a people somehow contracted cholera so hey we're gonna quarantine the population but um, yeah, we have cholera now, so that's not going to be very good, and, yeah, anything else you need to report on? Well, not really anything. 
We have our budget going to hell. We have our technology. We still haven't even gotten our first technology yet. We're just kind of sitting here doing nothing. And yeah, it's really quite boring. So I'm going to cut to 1850. Or at least I'm going to try to, and hopefully there won't be any event that will stop me. So, anyways, because this is kind of getting, this is going to get boring for you guys. So, anyways, hopefully in 1850 there will be something that happens. See you guys in a little bit. Okay, guys, we are in 1950 and nothing happens. Okay, we are back, everyone. Sorry, I had a little bit of difficulty there with my uh, computer. Anyways, we are back here in this Let's Play and uh, Let's Play a Santo Cafe, and we are in the year 1860. Yay! Another 10 years. And so, actually, in this time, we actually have a couple things that happened. One thing is, is that my population, I think, has decreased or has increased by one. It's one of those two. I can't remember if it was at 1.51 or 1.48. Um, well, we can also right about now do a couple of political reforms. So, I'm going to do that right now. What we need is, uh, not land reform. Actually, land reform would actually be really good. But we need education reform. And that's the only one we can do. How long would it take me to get the next one? Ah, it probably take me an entire year before I could get the next one. In fact, I do think we actually have enough points for this, but it's just that we don't have enough of that. And I already had the points pre-made, but I was like, eh. We're already like in 1869, I mean 1859, I might as well just wait until we're done. And anything else that's interesting happened? Well, Ethiopia regained its land from Egypt. I didn't expect that, and apparently Egypt and Ethiopia are going back at it. I'm wondering who's going to win that. Um, France has completely annexed Morocco. Yes, France is being quite aggressive in this game. I'm kind of getting scared of that because they're probably going to be our immediate neighbors. That's going to be scary, so, um, anything else going to happen in the year of 1860 for the Salto Caliphate? No! So we will do another time skip now! Okay, here's our next cut, and so I skipped to the point where you guys could see uh, another political reform, so the next political reform that I've decided to do is land reform, because we need more money. We are rapidly becoming poor. And so, we have lots of farmers and miners, so I'm thinking that this will drastically increase our economy. Nope. Actually, yes, we doubled in our economy, which means I can actually start affording more of this. Okay, let's start. Yeah, let's just start going all the way. Yeah, I had to, I had to completely adjust my economy because we did not have enough. And right now, just a little quick recap: we have our administration level and some of our provinces up to a hundred. In fact, I'll start moving these. This one, I'll start moving our only national modifier, the only national modifier this country will probably ever get to here and we're going to start encouraging more bureaucrats here so that we can start gaining this region and yeah only the only other thing of worth of worthy notice since like the last month or six months as I stalked you guys is that we have a 9.3 percent literacy rate which if you guys remember we start at about 3.8 literacy rate so I am so happy we have this right now I am so grateful I can do this but it's still not to the point I really want to and yeah I'm getting really rapidly worried that that France is expanding so quickly but we will see what happens I'm definitely not I'm definitely not going back on what I said I'm not gonna industrialize and I'm not gonna give in to the Western ideals if I go down I'm gonna go down my own way my style no other way it is gonna be mine you can't take that away from me so see you guys Hopefully in the next, in another 10 years, I don't think anything else important is going to happen between them and now. So, see you guys in another 10 years. And in 1870, I think that's when things are going to get spicy. Because that's when colonization is going to happen. And, eesh, that's going to become scary. So, see you guys in that point. Okay, so this is really important to us. But I think it's important just, just because it always, eh. Just because it's my own place, it's my own home country, so I'm going to add this in. The civil war between the United States and the CSA is going on right now. Um, the CSA looks like this, which is... Actually, by definition, they should be about even with the United States, but... They aren't, and the game trampled quite quickly. And it's almost over. This war is going to be over in about maybe a year or two, so... CSA lost again. USA won. USA, everyone. America. And really nothing else has really happened with us. Um, some expansion by the Ottomans and some Egyptians. Actually, I've never seen the Egyptians expand. Man, in this, not Egyptians, but Spanish. The Spanish in this game have just become, like, beefed up. They actually do stuff. 
instead of just like sitting there like they usually did and just like wait for everyone to just like overpass them they actually do stuff in this and right now um in terms of administration levels this is still not going up i think it's because most of this isn't really my completely accepted culture so yeah we're having difficulties with that but i'm trying to convert this last little region right here so i can have a good amount of things we have these two regions basically done we just need this region so and anyways time to do another time skip when important things happen you know i'll be there okay let's skip again and we are back everyone in 1870 the year in which huh Okay, I honestly don't know anything that happens in 1870. I know the Prussian French War happens in 1871, but I don't remember anything important happening in 1870. Uh, maybe in the comments you guys tell me. But anyways, we are back here in our Santo Caliphate year, and we have a couple things happening going around the world. First off, this is the first time I've ever seen this happen. Scandinavia has formed. Like, look at this. Scandinavia, everyone. Like, uh, this... I, <laughs> okay, I really wish I was in this campaign now, or at least actually, like, legitimately being a part of this, because I would love to play in Scandinavia right now. This is, like, this is one of those things I have not seen happen in this game, like, ever. Like, ever. Ever, 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 never, ever. And, I mean, the other shocking thing about that is that they're also a great power, too. It isn't, like, do anything. I mean, they're barely a great power, I'll give you that. But they're still a great power with, you know, some power and prestige and... I, I, the Scandinavia form, that's all I gotta say, it's, it's one of those things that you don't usually see, um, happen, so, uh, g give, give Sweden applause, man, they did it, they did something that, you know, I've tried in my own, you know, personal campaigns before, and I never could quite master, so, you know, that deserves a standing applause, um, other things happening in the world, not really much, I mean, China is China, um, I'm over here, slowly but surely realizing that I'm being surrounded by great powers. I mean, we have the Portuguese right there. Wow, the Portuguese, oh, I'm supposed to give Portuguese some credit too. They took over Tunis. So, they have like three different entryways in their Asia, which could give them a major advantage. And they finally fixed the glitch where they do not take over Zimbabwe anymore, which is so happy because, hey, that was so annoying when they could like take over Zimbabwe and then just like destroy everything. That was just so unfair, but... Um, they have three entryways, France is right there, and so is Spain. Spain is just like colonizing like a mofo. They deserve major credit, my book, in terms of like colonization. They are becoming colonizers. And for us, um, I was just about to adapt, you know, different things. What I think I might adapt, though, is um, rail transportation system. Because one, it gives us an entire rail, a free railroad system, I think, if I remember correctly. I mean... Well, free railroads, and it also gives us more money, which slowly over time, we have slowly bankrupted and destroyed our people, which, do I care? Eh, no. Do I think I should care? Yes. But do I care? That's the real question. Not in the slightest, so it's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, but anyways, we're having this really tense situation starting to come up, we're about to be in the year of the coloni colonization or the scramble for Africa so I think I might go a little bit slower by going to um I'll put you guys back in 1875 and you know we'll see what's happening there Ooh, the suspense is building up will the Santo Caliphate will be able to re reverse his destiny and not be conquered by who conquered them again oh you guys okay give me a second I have to think of this um if I'm thinking of it logically, okay. Okay, Great Britain conquered this. Uh, Portuguese still had this. Um, Germany conquered right about here. Um, if I remember correctly, this is actually the Spanish. I'm not Spanish, the French. The French actually took over the Santo Caliphate in real life. So, um, the biggest concerns, French and... Yeah, it's going to be great chance. And, oh, for my Industrial Revolution, I finally almost have this up to 100%. It's like 81.5. I am so very close. I'm almost so happy, and hopefully by the end of this end of this let's play, I'll have everything at 100%. That's one of my sub goals, as I'd say. But yeah, anyways, I'll see you guys in 
in January, maybe January 1st, or just some year in 1875. See you guys then. Wow, 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 wow. Ah, so we are back here, everyone, 1875, and it's finally come, everyone. The years I've been dreading, and the years of Santo Cafe has to show itself the most. And by the way, I just wanted to say something. Um. Do you guys remember in the history books when uh, Scandinavia started to colonize massive swaths of Africa? Yeah, I totally remember that in history books too, so... <laughs> um, yeah, we have that coming near us, and they obviously do not like us, so let's just increase our relationships just a little bit so it keeps our alliance a little bit strong. Um, France isn't really moving in this time, I'm kind of shocked, so... But we also need to make sure they do not they like us a little bit. Okay. We just have to make sure these two guys like us a little bit and show you guys a quick update on the great powers right now. Uh, it's going pretty good and um, some things are going wrong with Austria. It's like getting destroyed by like the Germans. So poor Austrians. They always get they always get like destroyed and nailed in these campaigns. I swear. I swear. Um, for us right now, we have been you know increased our literacy rate. I think we can now do something new. Um, we can do something new, but it's nothing I want to do new because the next thing I want to work on is administration reform because we need to basically finish off our, well, we need to basically finish off our administration levels because we do have some places that don't have it. And if you guys are wondering why I'm not doing any of these is because I think they're kind of pointless since I'm not really focusing on military or anything like that. And so far, I am just, <laughs> I am getting slightly scared by all these powers moving next to me. Oi, this this is gonna be a hard get. This is gonna be a hard part. This is this is the part where it will decide my destiny here and now. Will I be able to remain independent like the Ethiopians did in our time? Or will I be instantly taken over by this big gigantic French or Scandinavian empire? We, we will just have to see. So, um, one of my friends is messaging me. So, at that point, I will see you guys in the next cut. Okay, and we are back everyone in another like little segment I'm here where it's 1880 and the scramble for Africa is mostly taken care of I mean most of Africa has now been colonized and let's see who took the better loot well It seems like to me Scandinavia took the best loot. Oh wait, who's colonizing right here? Actually the great British might win this battle in the end they might take the best loot because this is uh, quite possibly the best re- wait, where is it? There it is. Yeah, this is the best region of all, but, I don't know, we- Scandinavia might pull out, but Scandinavia has definitely taken much more than I thought they would ever take in this game, and we are now completely surrounded by three different powers, who all look very hungry for more and more power. Spain, who took over most of, like, Lower Sudan, and a little bit of Ethiopia, um, France, who took over, uh, took over Morocco and is just just kind of taking over everything and then Scandinavia who's just like the new great power of the, the new great powerhouse I never expected oh it seems like Germany went to war with them at some point and it took back this little part over here poor Scandinavia it cannot stop the German ambition from taking over stuff but anyways now we are in this campaign which so completely surrounded by great powers and this is the part where I'm really scared and um yeah I we're gonna see if I can live. I'm, I'm not sure if I can live this because am I sphered by anyone? No. Am I going to be sphered by someone? Yes. It seems like the French seem to... No, the Scandinavians are working very, very hard to try to spare me. That is a good sign that people actually care about my nation, that we may survive to the end of this game. Um, I still don't know. It's still like up in the air and I'm still very, very scared and um, uh, yeah. I... I that I guess that's basically the rest of that. I'm very scared about our political situations and outside of that. Now, our internal political situations is is that I finally got administrative reform. It was a pretty good decision. We are 60% civilization, but as I said before, I'm not really going to civilize. I'm just doing this so that you know I look, I can keep my game slightly better so I don't go into debt. Which actually, this is probably <laughs> out of the 45 years. No, wait. A little bit more than that, uh, f no, 45 years is about correct. 45 years of playing this game, we've only accumulated 330k of money. I am very proud of that, actually, because it is very hard to accumulate money. Um, we have increased our literacy up to 16%, 
and we have a clergyman population of 1.63. That is awesome stats. In terms of our administration level, we are almost there. Like, almost in everything, we have almost 100%. It's so great. And now, since we are basically done with that, I'm going to start increasing our clergymen. Because I bet you it's anyway, anything. It's this province right here that's costing me. Yeah. Yeah, this should be a little bit higher right here. This should be a little bit higher. So, anyways, thank you guys. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm probably going to place in 1900s because I basically have the feel for this, uh, let's play, and I already know how it's going to end, so, let's, us uh, continue to the last, hmm, to the second to last, uh, save point, where I'll go to 1890, and we will see, hey, we actually are getting, Im people are immigrating to us? What? Providence is, what? We have no, nothing to offer the world. Why are you immigrating to us? We have an absolute monarchy, we are backwards, well, by European standards, we are a backwards nation, and we do not produce anything. Why are you guys immigrating to us? Okay, there we go, that's what I expected, that's more like it. Okay, anyways people, I will see you guys in 1890, the year of the... Dang, what happened in 1890? No, Germany had already formed by that point. Uh, sh nine, 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 nine. Uh, the Balkan Wars? Maybe? Question mark? Uh, yeah, I, I can't think of anything that really important happened in 1890. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think that was the year that China actually, like, gained national recognition because of their vast industrialization and conquered Korea. That is about the only thing I can think of that happened about that time. Anything else? Yeah, sorry. No, wait, 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 wait. No, the Korean conquest happened in 1908 by the Japanese. Yeah, because that's also the year they proved themselves to the Russians. Yeah, so that's on it. So I still don't know what happened in 1880, 1890. I, I don't know what happened any of these years. It seems like besides just the scramble for Africa, there's not really much that happened. So... Anyways, let us go to the unimportant year of 1890, everyone. Okay, everyone. We are back a little bit early because, you know what, I've decided that, um, I've had, en I've had kind of enough of just sitting here and watching my nation just slowly and surely look like it's going to be gobbled up by great powers. It's, like, really, really unnerve-wracking, so, you know, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. Um... You know, in Victoria 2, there were certain game or cer certain games and certain like uh, play styles or countries that no one wants to play as. This is one of them, and the reasons why I would say that that no one wants to play as this nation, while while I wouldn't personally want to play as it, is one. I don't think you can civilize fast enough. Okay. Like, you just cannot civilize fast enough for your nation to not be, like, completely surrounded by great powers and then, you know, gobbled up. I mean, I was going, you know, I wasn't, like, completely, like, dead, dead focused on civilizing. But, I mean, there was really nothing else I could do. Like, I can't attack Ethiopia because they had about the same amount of strength we did. Getting my troops over from the uh, uncharted regions of Africa would have cost me so much like nutrition that my troops have been dead by the time they reached Ethiopia and then they would have just simultaneously died from there. And it's the same thing for why I couldn't attack Algeria or Tunis or basically anyone so I'm kind of stuck in this own little place and I can't really like, you know, expand so you're kind of forced to just sit there and wait for your people to like build stuff which the only way you can, the only thing you can build then is you have to go for like um, early modernization, early construction, the basically the economic reforms, um, tree branch, because basically the militaristic, the military is like extra bonus for conquesting. Like you see, research points bonus when conquesting plus 25%. Yay! Um, it basically won't apply to you, so it's basically not useful. And so you're basically in this in this let's play more more than um, a great power is you're very restricted in what you can do. So um, and my point is is that even by the time you do industrialize, which I'm estimating by the time I industrialize, it's probably gonna be like 1910, 1920. The game's basically over, and there's basically nothing you can do. 
So I think these are reasons why people would not enjoy playing as this nation, why people don't usually choose this nation, and um, fi and finally, um, you know, I, and this is the reason why people won't want to choose this nation and do anything. I mean, it's really not much you can really do with the Santo Cafe. I mean, I wish there was like a special like African, you know, conquest. You know, I wish it was like, you know, like every little little like region. Like I wish, I kind of wish that they didn't have regions in this sense of the game. This was. I don't know, a kind of stupid move on their part. I think they, I wish you would have done it more like Crusader Kings 2 where you can like divide up the region how it wants to do and some du jour land can be like, like say you have du jour land in, um, say you're the duchy of, I'm just going to be an example, the duchy of Venice, you're right here in Crusader Kings 2, you could have a du jour claim on, on like Alexandria and that could be part of your realm because you know you like conquered it a long time ago and then it like, became a part of your culture so then that's your part of your realm and that kind of makes it like a your region so that means it kind of gives you to the basic powers and so you can kind of do more stuff with this with this kind of region lock mode region kind of lock mode you just are kind of more limited in what you do and it, it kind of stinks because you know a better system i think would have been like if you're an african nation you could be allowed to like you know individually colonize each little place like, you could individualize, like, you know, colonize Akur, you know, like, enslave maybe the local tribe and population. My friend better be quiet, otherwise I will go and rip his guts out with a harpoon, okay? I'm saying that to him right now on the screen, and he better take it seriously. So, because I'm doing a review of a, of a nation, of why you should or should not play it, and is it anything so yeah but just that kind of system of maybe just like slowly colonizing things maybe having like an EU3 you know like how they have those uh, rep national you know natives natives on the provinces you know the native you know how they did that in the EU4 where you like you only individually colonize one place maybe they could do that for like African colonies that would have been a smart idea you know just slowly start colonizing colonizing I mean it wouldn't be overpowered I mean, because uh, the Europeans would still have a massive advantage against them, and it would you'd be only taking one region at a time, or maybe even one province. But it would still give you something to do, and you know it might even benefit you know like somebody like the Santo Calife to actually gain a seaport or something. Because I mean, even if you're the Ethiopians, well, the Ethiopians have a much better advantage because they can actually fight against Egypt and you know actually do some expansion. And, you know, they have Yemen, they have Horrendez, they have all these other places that they can expand to, but for Santo Calpa, you really can't do anything. And the final question I guess you have to ask is, is that, is this, was this a fun campaign? And, you know, besides for all the, like, nostalgia for just, like, playing this game as a new nation and, you know, just kind of relaxing and, you know, kind of being very fearful about, oh, am I going to be conquered by this great power? Oh, that, oh, the Spanish are coming, everyone. The Spanish are coming. Um, I, I really don't think there's really much. Oh, by the way, we got sphered by Scandinavia, apparently. I just saw that. Wow. Um, besides that, I, it's really not that fun. It's very boring campaign. A very snoozeville campaign. You know, these are the reasons why no one ever sees a Let's Play on it, but, you know, I'm glad I kind of got through it and got to a good point of, of this and gave a good kind of overall review so overall review could you uh is this campaign fun no i'll give it like a one out of ten or a two out of ten and could you actually play it no you can't actually play it because by the time you get anywhere in the game the game's almost over or if you try to do early expansion it's not really gonna work so the sad break so i want to thank you guys for watching this it was fun letting you guys well, letting you guys see just a different side of a let's play here of like doing a different nation and if you guys want to see another nation please leave my guess a comment i mean i'm basically here doing this new series trying to think of nations that are you know no one ever does on the internet like um another nation i was thinking of doing after this is like colombia venice or venezuela and you know try to make grand colombia because that is actually a goal of a nation is to make Grand Columbia, but it never usually happens. And you know, I'd be love, I'd love to be, uh, I would love to figure out why. Or I could try to be the Zulu and try to make sure that we do not get taken over by the conglomeration of the British. That might be a little bit difficult, but that'd be a fun campaign to do. But like I said, thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to comment and subscribe. 
I really do mean it, and thank you for all your support for this let's, for this let's play and watching it through all the way. And yeah, this is fun. So see you guys in the future. Future. Yeah. Bye, guys.